Hey guys, welcome back to Nat One Videos. Today I'm going to be making some miniature flags. I had a little idea about how to do it with using a dried out baby wipe and some super glue, some string, and some cocktail sticks. So, here we go. So the first few steps of this process are pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure that you guys have used cocktail sticks and crafting projects in many different ways. The best part of this little project comes when we make the actual flag itself. But for these first steps, basically you cut the cocktail sticks to your desired length and then to make the bond stronger when gluing, you just cut a little notch where the crossbars meet. Add a little drop of super glue and hold the two sticks together until they stick, which shouldn't take too long. Once dried, that should hold pretty good, but maybe not if you intend to be moving around the tabletop a lot. So to make the bond stronger, just cut a short length of string and wrap it around the joint in a kind of over-under fashion, if that makes any sense. And once you're happy with how it looks, just add a drop of super glue to both sides and it should hold really well. This string has the added bonus of giving the flag posts a more authentic look as if they have been lashed together by rope. Now that the string is in place, the fly post should be pretty secure. Okay, on to the flag. I've seen people using lots of things to make little flags like paper, material, and I even saw a cool technique with melted plastic, but I haven't seen anyone using dried out baby wipes before. Correct me if I'm wrong. I like using baby wipes because they have a material-like texture that looks really good and I stumbled across a technique with super glue that gives you a lot of control when it comes to the final shape of the flag. I also have lots of baby wipes lying around at the minute. Measuring out and cutting your flag shape is easy. I am going for an uruk high battle standard here with this one, so I'm going for a slightly jagged and torn look. I've been making stuff for D&D for a while now, but this summer I discovered the whole Middle Earth SBG thing, which is pretty much the coolest thing I've seen in miniatures and tabletop gaming for a long time. I'm still a complete noob, I can't believe I didn't see it until now, but I can't wait to get stuck into painting some minis and building up some terrain next year. Tabletop games and Middle Earth, what's not to love? Anyway, once your flag is secured to the post, you can move on to adding super glue to the flag itself, and this is the best part. It will pretty much instantly set into whatever shape you hold the flag, and it will be really, really solid like it's been sculpted. I like to do this gluing part in stages so that you really have control. Glue a bit, let it set, and then move the flag and repeat. Just to say to be really careful because uh, it can get quite fumy, so don't hold your head over your work. But in the end, you should have a flag that looks like it's blowing in the wind like this. I saw someone make a comment on the Tabletop Crafters Guild that Citadel skulls are like the salt of modeling, so time for some seasoning. These are awesome and perfect for this little flag. Uh, I'm going to place one on top. These little skulls are quite easy to drill into. I just freehanded it with a drill bit so that I can make the joint more secure when gluing. And just like that, my humble little flag has become totally badass. I just then did a little trim here and there just to finish off the flag and it's on to the black Mod Podge stage. So moving into the part of the build that I am least confident about and that's the painting. Like I said earlier, I am going for an Uruk Highs flag, hence the white hand of Saruman. I've been painting lots of terrain recently and I feel pretty confident with rocks and landscapes etc but miniatures is another matter altogether so to any mini painters out there please go easy on me. 2021 is the year that I am finally going to sit down and improve my mini painting skills and I'm hoping to pick up lots of tips from you guys. Once the hand was painted I moved on to painting the flag posts and adding some details. For the flag posts I just used burnt umber and then did a dry brushing with some burnt umber that I had lightened up with some titanium white. If any of the miniature painters out there have any good tips on painting wood, this miniature scale, then please let me know in the comments below. Once I finished off the posts I lightened up the burnt umber even further to try and get a bony colour uh, for the skull which I just built up in layers of dry brushing again. I'm just using standard acrylic paints here but when I really get into the mini painting side of things I could really use some pointers on the type of paints I should be using so yeah again please let me know. I then used the same bony colour to do a very light dry brushing on the flag for highlights and to finish it off I just used some straight burnt umber to make the flag look muddy and worn out. 
So there we go, uh, my little uruk -hai white hand of Saruman flag. Um, I've kind of recently just taken an interest in the whole SBG thing. Um, I'm not, I'm a complete noob, but you know, I'm looking forward to doing more stuff like this. It's gonna be really fun. Let's take a look at some other flags that you could make as well. So I've also gone for a Gondor flag like this and I'm in the process of making a Rohirrim flag. So the only difference with this one is just one match, uh, one toothpick and I wrapped some cardboard with tinfoil and I'm going to do a black wash on the tinfoil and I'm about to paint a little white horse and I thought well I might as well film that so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to make a little piece of scattered terrain for each one in fact I've already made my scattered terrain for the Urukai one I just have to paint up my citadel skulls a little bit that are piled up here and that's going to then slot in there just like that it's a nice little piece of terrain quite like that so that one's pretty much done apart from a little bit of color on the skulls uh, let's paint the horse of Rohan on here hopefully I don't mess it up painting this little horse didn't go exactly as planned here I would say that the result is just about passable the shape of the flag curves were a little awkward to work around when it comes to doing detail uh, but when it's on the tabletop I think it will still be recognizable as a Rohan flag I'm really pleased with how the other two flags turned out though, so two out of three ain't bad. The workaround for this is to practice more and get better at painting small things at awkward angles. Time to make some scatter terrain. Uh, for this I'm using PIR foam which is big thick roof insulation foam. It carves really easily and makes great rock formations which is cool. I watched a video by Encounter Terrain about using PIR foam for building terrain and my father-in-law happened to have a few sheets lying around so my next few videos will be using PIR instead of XPS. With this piece of terrain I decided to do all my gluing with hot glue for two reasons. Firstly it's really fast drying and second it adds a little bit of extra strength to the cardboard base and gives the piece a little bit of extra weight. For my rocks I used bark clippings. Uh, when painted up they look awesome and for the ground texture I used more bark which I had blended up. It gives a really nice range of textures from fine dust to bigger chunks. I had glued two pieces of cardstock together for my base and there was a little gap around the edge that I didn't want to be exposed so I just ran some super glue around the edge and sprinkled in some of the bark dust and yep that worked perfectly. Then it's straight into a base coat of Mod Podge and black paint which seals the piece but also gives a nice dark base coat to work with. Everyone lands on their own way of painting rocks. For me, I quite like a dark grey aesthetic. So I started with graphite grey and when I'm painting, I don't work it into the nooks and crannies so that the black shows through in those areas and acts as a shadow. Then I use neutral grey value 5 for a dry brushing over the whole piece. The drier the brush, the better because you can always add more. So just build it up until you're satisfied. After that, I use some titanium white to lighten up my neutral grey for the highlights which is the final detail that really makes the rocks pop. I move on to burnt umber for any of the areas I want to be earthy. I find that the best areas are where the finest of the blended bark has landed and then the slightly larger bark bits look like small rocks and boulders stuck in the ground. For the grass colors, I mix my own green using cadmium yellow and cobalt blue. These two colors mix together really well uh, to give you a whole range of green shades. I just stop mixing when it looks good to me and then paint everywhere that I want to put my grass. I said earlier that I did all my gluing with hot glue but that was a bit of a blooper. That wouldn't really work with flocking because you would see the glue under the flocking. Watered down PVA is best for this but I use some wood glue because it's what I had to hand and it also dries clear. Then just sprinkle on your flocking and it really starts to come together. For the clump foliage I use some hot glue again because the clumps are big enough to hide the hot glue behind it. Just to say, as always, I will leave links to where you can get the flocking in, and the foliage in the description below the video if you want to get some for yourself. Then to finish it off, I just add a little extra depth uh, with some of these little grass tufts. Uh, these are super handy because they have sticky bases um, and makes them really easy to just put on. And that's it. All that's left to do is poke my little flags into the foam and it's all done. Oh, 
one last thing I forgot to put black wash on the tin foil thanks for watching guys I really hope you got something out of the video and hopefully see you next time please subscribe if you're enjoying my content all the best guys bye